Today, we're going to talk about the one thing, and I'm talking one thing that can literally change one, not only your weight loss goals, but your health in general. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori Marvis, and I'm a board certified family and lifestyle medicine physician who's trained in lifestyle interventions, nutrition, and just general family medicine. And I've been practicing for over two decades. And I'm here to tell you, I have helped lots of people manage their health. And I found this one thing and the science proves it absolutely is a game changer. So you want to stick to the whole video because I'm not going to talk about the science, but I'm also going to talk about three ways to start incorporating this. And in addition to that, I'm going to give you an exclusive opportunity to join a free masterclass. So let's get started. What is this one thing? And I know you guys are going to roll your eyes, but hear me out. It is self monitoring. You might have heard this, what's not measured isn't managed. This is absolutely true. If you have, let's take a simple example, finances, and you have certain amount of money coming in, and you don't pay attention to what you're spending or what's in your checkbook, quickly you run into problems, right? Things aren't managed. You're not looking at the data. Yeah, I hear you, but self-monitoring what exactly? when it comes to weight loss or some other things. We're gonna dive around the science around a few different monitors, including weight, hypertension, blood sugars, and some other things. Why assessment and looking at the data without that emotional attachment is so important. And we'll talk about that too, because many times this can actually be anxiety provoking for individuals. When people look at this data, they're like, I don't wanna measure it. I don't wanna look at the scale. It makes me feel stressed. It makes me do different things. I feel bad and guilty. Well, we're going to change our relationship to the data. This is all it is. We're allowing the data to provoke an emotion. And when you start seeing it that way, that this, this is not an enemy, it is just the data, that you can choose to allow it to make you feel bad or not. That is the tree, the key there. But I get ahead of myself. Let's jump into why this is important. And there's a few different things I want to highlight and particularly six different reasons why this has been helpful and it shows in the in the research, right? So number one, you have enhanced awareness with self-monitoring. So regularly measuring your health outcomes increases awareness of one's health status right now, which is really the very first step of improvement. If you don't know where you are at the beginning of a journey, how do you know where to go? I mean, seriously, think about this. This is a journey. Your journey for weight loss, your journey to improve your diabetes, your journey to improve anything has to start with the beginning, guys. And to do that, you have to look at the data. Again, it's just data. I, I have told this so many times to patients, it's just the data. But what is the evidence? Okay, well, studies have shown that self-monitoring of weight is associated with weight loss and maintenance, which we know is so important. People lose weight and they gain it and they lose it and they gain it. This is a yo-yo dieting thing. But there was a meta-analysis where they take a bunch of different types of studies, and they found that participants who frequently self-weighed lost 1.7 kilograms more than those who did not self-weigh. Now, what that means is, so kilograms is 2.2 pounds, one, so that's about a three-pound weight loss. That may not seem like much, but over a consistent time, that adds up. So really important to think about this. We're just starting with self-awareness. Number two, you get a behavioral feedback loop, right? So regular tracking creates a feedback loop that reinforces one, either the healthy behaviors or discourages the unhealthy behaviors. So the evidence, you know, there was a study on self-monitoring of blood pressure that demonstrated that individuals who regularly check their blood pressure were twice as likely to adopt lifestyle changes that reduce the hypertension over time than those who do not self-monitor. And this is why I feel like CGMs are a game changer, which we'll get to in a minute. I use those many times with patients and also in a course that I run. And it's so imperative that they look at this as it's just data. It's real-time data. It's accurate data. And they can make decisions, not an emotional response, but looking at the data and looking, saying, what is best for me in this moment do I keep going where I'm going or do I need to change something? There's some more important pieces here. We don't want to be guessing at what we should be changing. That's where the education comes in. Again, I get ahead of myself. Moving on, goal setting and motivation, right? So measuring health metrics provides a tangible, right? You can touch it. You can look at it to set and achieve health goals, which can be highly motivating. So many of us understand that motivation 
is a finicky friend. Uh, it's a lover that likes to cheat on you a lot. It comes and it goes and it may not show up for a while. It, suddenly it shows up, you do something and then it just disappears. It slinks out at the back, right? But when you're looking at the data, you can really use this data and say, yes, I should be motivated. I should be encouraged because I'm not just making this up in my head. I'm looking at the data. The data says I'm doing the right thing. When the data goes the opposite direction of where we want, we adjust and we move, get back on track, right? You wouldn't, you know, just put a sailboat out in the water and let it just start taking direction. You just like, okay, wherever the wind takes me. Well, I guess if you wanted to just see where you ended up. But if you had a certain destination in mind, you're going to be looking at, are my staying track? When you think about a plane that goes from point A to point B, it's not in one straight line. It's constantly adjusting because there's wind shear and different things, you know, uh, I don't know all the things that go on today, but if you look at the data and look at an airplane from A to B, there's many, many micro adjustments that are occurring along that journey. It's not just one linear line. It's up and down, up and down, but your trajectory is the important thing, which again, we'll get to in a minute. So when you look at this um, research on goal setting and weight management particularly, found the individuals who set specific measurable uh, goals lost three to 5% more of their body weight over six months compared to those who did not set specific goals. And self-monitoring acts as like, right, a, a way to track progress towards those goals. It, it boosts motivation and adherence. So you can say, okay, I have a weight loss goal of let's say 10 pounds over three months. How do you know if you're not stepping on the scale? How do you know what you're doing is not is, is or isn't working? Some people are like, well, I like to feel the tightness of my pants. Okay, could be a similar type thing, but you're still measuring the same thing. Maybe not with just the glaring numbers looking at the scale. Again, I appreciate the scale and the, the provoking of the emotions and stuff. We're going to get to that in a minute. But really, guys, you have to understand it is so critical that if you are not looking at it, just monitoring it, and you have specific goals, you're like the sailboat without a captain directing it where it needs to go. You need to be the captain of your sailboat. Okay, moving on. Accountability, right? So tracking health outcomes can provide a sense of accountability, whether to oneself, a health care provider, or even, let's say, a group of like-minded individuals who are on a similar journey and path. So very important. Well, what is the evidence, Dr. Marvis? Well, I'm going to tell you. Evidence, a study on weight loss interventions found that participants who regularly monitored their weight and share this information with their health care provider, were 20% more successful, 20% guys, more successful in losing weight and maintaining weight than compared to those who didn't. Holy moly, 20%, that's incredible. Next, early detection of health issues, right? We understand regular measuring um, measurements like your blood labs and things like that, or your blood pressure can really lead to early intervention. So the earlier you can intervene, the better, right? It's like those who, step on the scale daily. You know, they maybe spent a little time and too many, you know, treats over the weekend. They step on the scale Monday, like, yeah, well, I'm going to be a little bit more aware of what I'm eating today. I'm going to be tracking this, right? So you'll see that people who do that, they tend to stay in a healthy weight more regularly, even if they veer off and do something that's maybe not quite as healthy, but they come right back on. Next, um, in that, what is the evidence of this? Well, they found that routine monitoring of blood pressure can identify, one, hypertension early, preventing complications like cardiovascular disease, heart disease, strokes, things like that. So then when you do this and you have early intervention based on these measurements, that can reduce the risk of cardiovascular events by 15 to 20%. And don't forget, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of men and women in the United States. That is incredible. Just monitoring, just checking your blood pressure. Mm. Next, and last, is empowerment and control, right? So self-measurement empowers individuals to take control of their health and leading to better health management. You are not a victim here. You make the decisions every single day that impact your health, that impact your inner state. What are you doing, right? So let's give you empowerment. You, my friend, are in charge. And what is the evidence? Well, empowerment through self-monitoring we'll get to the emotional piece here in a minute, is linked to improved health outcomes, especially around chronic disease. And one of my favorite ones to work with is blood sugar, right? So patients with diabetes who frequently monitor their glucose levels 
showed way better glycemic uh, improvement or control and reduced levels by one to two percent. That is insane. I mean, a one to two percent, guess what? Medications don't even do that. But the power of your mind and awareness and giving yourself attention to something is absolutely where your power lies. Okay, now I'm going to address a few things that might be a little more stressful for you, but I really want to I really want to talk about this because it's one thing I hear as an excuse of a reason why people don't want to monitor, and it really can be frustrating for them when they don't see that they're advancing or doing better because they're they're stuck in this in this space where they feel that they can't because they they don't want to turn towards the fear or the emotional. Uh, stress that comes from self-monitoring, right? Well, it's time, ladies, that we do this, that we turn into it. We don't resist it because what we resist will persist and it grows and we fear it even more, right? So if we turn to it and welcome it and say, hey, what are you here to teach me? Not like, what are you here to judge me? No, that we need to divorce that voice in our head. I call that voice, I have a special name for that voice in my head, and it's Lizzie Lizard Brain. And Lizzie Lizard Brain likes to come in and sneak up on me and say things and make me doubt myself and do different things all the time. But the moment that I aware that it's Lizzie Lizard Brain saying, oh, look at that number, you failed again, you might as well just give up. Or mm, maybe you are looking at um, your cholesterol. Oh, look at that, cholesterol didn't improve. Eating all that fiber on those plants, that's not gonna help, you might as well stop. That, my friend, is your Lizzie Lizard Brain. And I would encourage you to maybe consider naming your Lizzie Lizard Brain. Feel free to use that. But Lizzie, she makes me laugh now. And when you laugh at it, you're detached from the emotion. Anyway, I get on. So what are the three ways that you can kind of really detach yourself, right, from the data, right, that emotional response, really paying attention to it. Number one is understanding your numbers, right? So education about what the numbers mean and recognizing that fluctuations are normal can reduce your anxiety. And this is so important. I have a framework on how I approach people with different medical problems. And part of that signature framework is five steps. There's understanding what's going on through assessing. And then the education piece is so absolutely critical. How can you make good decisions if you're not making informed decisions, right? This is number one, because now you're not going to feel like you're out there alone and confused. You have the knowledge to make a good decision based on where you are at a particular moment. That is empowering, my friends. Number two is focus on trends, 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 trends. Remember I told you about the airplane flying from A to B and how it's like, right? We're going to look at the trend, right? Is the weight loss going down? Is the cholesterol going down? Is the blood pressure improving? Is your sleep going up? You know, maybe there's ups or downs, but we look at the data and we appreciate what are the trends. We understand one day is better than the other. Maybe we go out and have a few mini chips and salsa. That is mine. That is my thing. That is Lizzie Lizard who was like, oh, Lori, you just want, you just want, maybe another bowl of the chips and salsa. Anyway, Lizzie, like I said, Lizzie likes to make herself known every day in different ways. But remember, that is really, really important is looking at your trends. And that's why the CGM is really important, right? So it's not the blood sugar just one time a day that tells me, oh, I should be eating this or, oh, I'm okay. What are the trends saying? What is the trend saying about certain types of foods? The CGM is so powerful. And that CGM is called the continuous glucose monitor. But I just wanted to share that with you. Moving on. Next is food and activity. Oh, sorry. Got ahead of myself. Um, and last is separate your self-worth from the data, right? Remember, the health matrix are just numbers, guys. This is not a judgment it is a snapshot in time and these things change, right? And do not define your worth or your success based on one number or one data. One day you gained one pound and next week or the next day you lose a pound and a half. And you're like, yay. And then the next day you gained a pound back. Mm -mm. Looking at the trends, divorcing your self-worth. All we're looking at this data is so we can make informed decisions about our health. That's all we're doing. And it's so very, very important. I really want you guys to get this down. Understand your numbers, focus on the trends, not the daily changes, and separate your self-worth from the data. So what can you do? There's three actions you can do to improve your weight loss through self-monitoring. Number one is daily weigh-ins. Yes, I said daily. Um, some people are like, I can only start with weekly. Whatever you do, you. But the daily weigh-ins are going to be beneficial. One, again, it's going to be a great 
litmus test to determine, hey, can I can I see that when I look at the scale, I appreciate that Lizzie Lizardbrain is going to make herself known. And she's going to tell me that I'm a failure and I'm going to look at her and go, I hear you, Lizzie Lizardbrain. I appreciate you. But all you're teaching me is that, yes, this is just data and it's okay. I am not going to dance with you in your remarks today. Number one. Number two is a food and activity log, right? I want you to measure just take in what you're taking in. People are always in amazed at the amount of food, one, maybe the liquid calories that they're drinking, or the amount of chips and salsa that they're having, or maybe that one extra, you know, bite or slice of banana bread, whatever those things might be, but track your activity and track your food. You don't have to do it long term, but you can do it for a week. Maybe you do it for a week every quarter, just to understand what you're going on. But if you have specific weight loss goals, this is one way to be very, very helpful. And again, when you transition from a standard American diet just to a whole food plant-based diet, you're already in the win. Right? You're already going to be reducing your caloric intake, so you don't even necessarily have to be monitoring calories. But if you're hitting a weight loss plateau, this data is invaluable to seeing, okay, what is going on here? Well, maybe it's because we've been you know, having an extra glass of wine at night, or I don't drink alcohol. I'm just guessing, throwing out some ideas. Maybe it's like myself, I like to go buy in the pecan bag. I'm telling you guys, I have lots of Lizzie's. Calls me from the <laughs> cabinet saying, you know you just want another handful. Just another handful. You're walking by, you might as well just, nuts are great for you. And nuts are very good for you, but not in excess because they promote weight gain and yada, yada. Moving on. Next is regular progress reviews. Just look at your logs once a week, right? This is like you would do anything in a business Consider your health is your number one business because if you are healthy, my friends, you show up everywhere else in your life. So you are the CEO. You are the pilot of your own health. Okay, my rant is done. I hope you found that helpful. So um, please check below. I have a free masterclass on the five steps. We go deep diving into the five steps, my signature framework of really to master your metabolism and lose weight. And I talk about the four biggest mistakes people make on their weight loss journey. So I hope you found this helpful. Helpful. <laughs> please, please, please subscribe, click and share, leave comments. I've been reading, I read every single comment, guys. I try to get inspiration on the next videos, which I do have some more videos I really want to talk about around some comments and cholesterol, which I'll be working on. And yeah, tell me where you want me to go because I really appreciate it. I find it fun to go dig into the rabbit holes and I really appreciate you. Yes, so if you want to register for the masterclass, please don't forget that is um, down below in YouTube and somewhere in the bio and Instagram. So again, as always, I want to appreciate you and say thank you that I am so grateful for you every day. And I'm wishing you joy, peace and love and healing above all else because we all need more of that in our day every day. Every day we need more healing in our life. So remember, you, my friends, are the CEO of your health. And that is how you show up for everything else that you care and love about. You have to show up for yourself first. So hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and have a blessed and wonderful day.